when I wear hijab, it's like I'm restricted, I'm oppressed, but when I don't wear hijab, it's like I'm free. When I decided to take it off in public, it was like um, I have a power and I can bring back uh, my dignity. I remember women without a job. Since last year, I, I was not wearing a scarf on purpose. I'm just a normal housewife. I'm just a normal woman, and I want to do something for my rights. On uh, 27th of December, as usual, uh, there were lots of photos of women uh, wearing white or saying some sentences about a compulsory hijab. But among them, there was a picture of a girl to a very crowded street who got up on a utility box and uh, waved her white scarf on a stick uh, like a white flag. She was on that box uh, for almost half an hour and after that when she came down they arrested her. She was in um, prison for one month. For me it was the symbol of uh, civil disobedience in a very beautiful way. I asked the uh, other women uh, from now on let's start having our white headscarf on sticks so the, uh, the girl of Engalab Street started. I was just moving uh, that white flag for almost five, six minutes and then the police car came and they arrested me. I was interrogated for almost two, three hours. They knew who I was because of my Instagram page. They tried to force me to tell I was a spy. I was furious, I was scared. Then they um, called for uh, some lady officers Suddenly I was lying on the ground and she was beating my face and she was grabbing my, my hair with one hand and, and there were lots of bruises on my face. I was in prison for seven days and I was on hunger strike for five days. After two, three weeks, I went to that office to get back my mobile phone. I got arrested again. They arrested my husband. He was waiting for me in the streets. We were in an uh, interrogation room for um, almost three, four hours. It was actually the first time I saw fear in my husband's face. But uh, the prosecutors decided to let us free because they didn't have anything. In May, uh, I went to Kashan City with my nine-year-old uh, son and one of my friends. Um, one day, we went to a park. Also, we were wearing a beautiful head garland, and we were very happy. The next day, five police officers uh, came to arrest us. I just uh, asked my friend to take care of uh, my son. The guard pointed the toilet. I went there and she said, yeah, you're gonna spend the first night there. 
It was like a little rock beside a toilet. I don't know, I couldn't even see it. I was in Kashan for nine uh, days and I was on hunger strike for uh, nine days. After the second uh, arrest and the third one and being in uh, prison in Kashan, I, was, I, I realized there is no law and they can do anything with you. And uh, uh, then I was, I was so scared of my life, of my son's life. I was given a number of a man who could help me uh, get out of the country. Um, uh, when I called him, uh, he, he told me, you have, uh, it's the perfect time if you want to go out and you have two hours to leave. And I was, at first I was shocked and they said, I'm going to do it. Leaving my husband behind is, is, was excruciating. I only had uh, two hours to leave the house, so I, I just took um, a few items, a um, toothbrush, a simple phone and, uh, and sunscreen, and my sunglasses, just that. I had proper hijab because I didn't want to attract any attention. I took a look at my house, my life. I was living in that house, I don't know, for 12 years. And I had my baby there. I just took a few items with me and that was it. That was the only things I could take with me. And I left the house. The journey took eight, nine hours to the border. When it was around midnight, uh, the guy took me to the mountain. I was shaking and uh, when I was climbing the mountain, it was just the sound of my heartbeat. The guy told me, what's going on with your heart? I can, I can hear your heart. Relax, I'm gonna help you. And I was holding him like he was my my best friend or my, my brother or something. When we got to the top of the mountain, it was like uh, daylight. It was uh, moon and floodlight of the stations. Not only I could see the color of the flowers, I could, I could see the shape of the flowers. They were beautiful. The whole hill covered with flowers. And now that I see this beautiful scenery, I'm leaving this country for the last time. The guy told me, you're safe now. You're not in Iran anymore. A Turkish guy came uh, with a horse and and the guy told him, be careful, she's like my sister. I had uh, another, I guess, one hour and a half of horse riding to get to, to a village. I used to wear makeup and happily go out uh, explore the city, walking around the city, but now I'm like an illegal person hiding in a room. When the news of me uh, leaving the country came out, there were lots of backlash from government supporters and also anti-government. Those days uh, were um, the most difficult uh, days of my life. I respect the women who 
uh, choose to wear hijab and um, I'm really happy for them and I support them but uh, I want them to understand and uh, respect our choice. I know that the women inside Iran are going to be brave enough to support each other. Nobody can uh, put out uh, this little flame, it will grow. Around the world, uh, little by little, in, in all countries, women are getting back their rights and it's time for Iranian women and they can't stop us. <laughs>